come, I want you to face the center aisle. Everybody walks in this church. Everybody gets blessed. Everybody trusts God. Everybody believes for miracles. Increase, 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 increase. Look at these blessed tithers. Increase. Come on, let me hear you, Antoine. Increase, increase. Increase. Face the center aisle. Come from the rear, everybody. That's right, bring it with joy. Magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. The Son He has redeemed. Won't the Son He has redeemed? Drop your hands with joy. 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 Drop your hands with joy.
to do what Sister Janessa Malone just did. You see it right there in the comments on the screen. I need you to hit the share button. And I mean, I need you to hit it expeditiously. I need you to wear that thing out. I need you to wear that thing out. Go crazy uh, sharing and tagging because this is our midweek Bible study. And I'm excited to be here just one more time. Praise the Lord to your brother Troy. Let me know where you're watching from as you're coming in. Uh, say something so that I know somebody's here with me. Sister Tanisha, so good to see you. Uh, Sister uh, Regina, so good to see you. Sister Amanda, so good to see you. Deacon Jarrett, good to see you, sir. So good. Uh, Minister Virginia, so good to see you. Come on, let's go. Sister Ashley, so good to see you. Uh, Deacon George, we are live, sir. Good to see you. Elder LaShawn, so good to see you. Yes, 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 yes. I see Letitia. Good to see you. Glad to have you. Sister Donna, praise the Lord to you. So good to see you. I love it. Come on, talk to me here. Let me see who else is here. Uh, Brother Matt in Chicago, Illinois. Good to see you, man. Good to see you with us. Our own Deaconess Nancy Bryan watching live tonight. Uh, from New York City. We honor you. Thank God for you. Uh, Brother Al, good to see you, man. Taniqua, 60 seconds of this. Let's go. Let me know where you're watching from. <clears throat> Let me know where you're watching from. And I need y'all tagging every FCC member. Let's go. You know what to do. I need you tagging your friends, your family. Let's get the group text flying. Let's get them out. Brother Brent, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, yes, yes, Sister Laverne, so good to see you. Sister Kara, good to, here we go, here the saints are, here the saints are. Good to see you. Sister Nakenya, good to see you. Uh, Latasha, good to, oh, look at our members coming on in, coming on in, coming on in. Latisha's watching from South Carolina. Let's go, you got 30 more seconds. Tag those friends, all of our leaders, you know what leaders do. Uh, you ought to be sending that link out so that we can get some more people in the building. There are 50 something of us in here right now. That needs to double. And that needs to double in the next few moments. Okay. So I need us to step into the role of digital disciples, electronic evangelists, and let's get the word out there. Brother Asa, good to see you, man. Glad you're feeling better. And I am just excited about the great things that are happening here in our church. Well, as you can tell, I'm not uh, in the cyber sanctuary. I'm not at home right now. I am uh, on the road again. Songwriter said, feels so good to be on the road again. I am uh, in yet another city uh, right now, getting ready to go uh, to a service to preach here. I'm in a different time zone uh, than we are uh, there in Atlanta at our Atlanta campus. But nevertheless, I'm so excited to be here with you. We're getting ready to honor the Lord with our substance before we go into the word. And uh, really, we all ought to be able to do that now. We all ought to be able to do that now. I want you to go ahead and get the um, or look at the giving options there on the screen. Everybody uh, ought to do that now. Very quickly, let's just lay it out there. I need five of you to stand with pastor tonight. Pastor sowing a $100 seed. I need five of you, one, two, three, four, five, five of you to stand with me with a $100 seed tonight. The rest of you, I need you to get $30 in your hand right now. I need everybody that can. If you're tithing, of course, you know we're 100% tithing church. Uh, we believe in supporting the work of ministry. And uh, I, I don't want to talk too much about that now, uh, but I've got an amazing announcement that we're going to make on Sunday. Um, an amazing announcement, a, a, a God announcement. Uh, but right now, let's honor the Lord with our substance. While you're giving, can I just say, and I, I can say it, I'm going to say it. I, I'm such a proud a uh, proud pastor tonight because of the amazing, amazing uh, team God has blessed us with here at Faith Covenant Church as evidenced by the fact, catch this, that I was not there on this past Sunday. I was not there. I was not in Atlanta. I was not at service. I was all the way in Chicago, Illinois, ministering for our founder, uh, Bishop Moore and Lady Moore at their church convention. And uh, even though I was not there, here's what blow, blows me away. The leadership team of our great church stepped up. They, they, they uh, shined. They executed. And at the end of the day, God was glorified. Elder Lewis Pollard preached an amazing message on Sunday there at our church. The people of God showed up. We had chairs down the aisle once again, as is our norm. We had 
uh, 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 people joined. Uh, somebody joined again. We had multiple baptisms uh, on Sunday. And uh, at the end of the day, the truth marched on. And that is a credit to you all, members of our church, for being such an amazing, an amazing stand-up group of people. I'm excited about our future. Sister Janessa said Sunday was amazing. I believe it. I saw it. I was right there. I was right there watching. I was right there watching and uh, just blessed and overjoyed by what God is doing. But let me just reiterate, even as we're giving now, I need five of you that are standing with me with a $100 seed. I need the rest of us to get at least $30. And I'm still not happy uh, with, with, with who I'm seeing in the comments or who I'm not seeing in the comments, all right? So let's go to work. Elder LaShawn, I know you're here. I need, I need a text to hit every one of them choir members' phones. And I need to see every choir member. If you sing in this church, you come to Bible study in this church, huh? Hallelujah. Deacon George, I know you're here. Let's go. I need to see all my deacons. I need to see all my ministers. Uh, Minister Matt and I, there you are. Good to see you. I need you to get all our ushers, all our greeters, because there's a word from the Lord tonight. There's a word from the Lord tonight, and I want us to get it very quickly. If you're sowing, there's Minister Lawrence, Minister Deacon Elder Pastor, uh, uh, Apostle Lawrence. You know, he gets a new title every service. Uh, so it's so good to see you, sir. I need to see some more of our names coming in, and let me know if you're giving. Now I've got my. In fact, let me do mine now, because uh, I, you know, I get to get to going fast, and you know, and, Amen. Let me do mine now. What did I say? I'm, I'm giving a hundred. There it is. Let me go ahead and hit send. I'm out here in the wilderness right now, y'all. So pray for this. Pray for this signal. Uh, FCC ATL. Yep, that's the one. Face ID. Processing, 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 processing. Told you I'm out here in the wilderness. Pro there, okay, there we go. I sent mine. 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 There are four, five of you that are standing with me. Everybody else get a $30 seat. I don't have long. We got to go. But I want to I wanna reiterate a few things. This Saturday, this Saturday, even while you're giving, noon prayer at our church is amazing. And this Saturday, I think, is going to be the biggest one because this Saturday, I'm having what we're going to call training day. Training day takes place this Saturday, right after noon prayer. I want to see all of our leaders. I want to see all of our ministers, but I also want to see all of our uh, new team members that are joining uh, any of our ministries. If you signed up for something at the ministry fair, if you signed up for uh, whether it's music ministry, whether it's hospitality, security, parking lot, youth ministry, whatever it is, I want to pour into you this Saturday. We're not going to be there all day. We'll be there for noon prayer, and then I need a couple of hours of your time after noon prayer so that we can share. Somebody must have got the vision and share because the numbers are going up. Look at y'all. Hallelujah. Uh, training day is going to be this Saturday. Now, Elder Pastor, why are we doing training day? Because we are getting ready to go somewhere new. We're getting ready to do uh, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. We are getting ready to step into uncharted waters. And I hope you'll shout because yes, we have our Harvest Fest on the 31st. It's going to be amazing. I want you to bring your family, the community, everybody. But I got I, I, I've got a, I've got a sneaky suspicion. My Holy Ghost spidey senses are tingling that November the 6th, Tribe Sunday at FCC, which is our family and friends day, is going to be crazy. Can I tell you, I've already got my, I got guests coming. I got, I ain't going to tell you how many guests I got because you know, I, I don't play about my invitations now. But I will tell you one guest that I got today. Check this out. The president, the president of the NAACP, his office reached out to me today and said, listen, we're in election season. Listen, listen, I need Faith Covenant to hear me. They said we're in election season and we really want to get him in front of large congregations. Listen to what I'm saying to you. We really want to get the president of the NAACP in front of large influential congregations in key cities. And I'm like, okay, that's great. You want me to call somebody? They said, well, is Faith Covenant available? I said, oh my God today. What did you say? Y'all miss what I said to you. They said the president of the NAACP, listen to this, his office reached out to me and said, would it be okay if he came to FCC on Sunday, November the 6th? 
I said, would it be okay? Yes, it will. He can, he can be one of my guests. He's coming to the four o'clock service uh, to be with us. Now, I need you to share it and hear this because we're going into the word now. Listen to this. They reached out to us, hear me again, because they wanted to get him in front of large, influential congregations. And they want to come to our church. I'm just trying to tell you that something special is going on. All right. I want to see you Sunday. I want to see you at the Harvest Fest Monday. I want you to get your guests together. Tomorrow morning, all of our members are going to get an email because I need all of our members to sign up for your service. I need to know who's coming to 12, who's coming to four. I need to know how many seats we're going to have. Amazing things are going to happen. But let's get ready to go into the work. Listen, as I mentioned a moment ago, I am out of town. I have a service. I've been preaching my little heart out uh, in this season, and uh, I got more work to do. I'm in uh, St. Louis, East St. Louis, Illinois tonight. Uh, I'm flying out at seven in the morning. I'm coming to Atlanta. We're hosting a large conference at the M3 Center. I have to go speak there. Then I'm getting on a plane again right after that, going out to another part of the country tomorrow. But I'm here tonight for the purpose of introducing our teacher, our preacher tonight, Charity, there you are. I'm here tonight to introduce uh, the one that's going to share with us from the bread of life, or break the bread of life, share with us from the word of the Lord. You know, here at FCC, we have some amazing gifts, some amazing leaders. And I got to go get in this, in this car and head over to this church. But there's still a word from the Lord. Now, again, I'm going to be there Sunday in person, not on the screen. But tonight, I want us to sit attentively. I want us to get our notebooks and our tablets and our devices out because our own elder doctor, Matisa Wilbin, is going to be sharing the word of God on tonight. And it's going to be an exciting word. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, will you help me celebrate her as she comes? Let's give God praise. Now, I know you've sown. If you haven't, let's go do that. We're doing great things. We're, we're, we're feeding people. We're, 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 we're uh, uh, making things happen. We're buying suits for brothers. We're buying books for schools. We're, we're doing stuff, y'all. So if you haven't sewn, cash app, dollar sign, FCCATL. But help me receive our own doctor, elder doctor, Matisa Wilbin, as she comes at this time. Elder? Thank you, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Are you, are you doing all right? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm I'm running, trying to make a hundred because they told me ninety nine and a half won't do. I just want to get out of here. Is there a word from the Lord tonight, Ellen? Yes, sir. There is a word. All right. Well, everybody, you heard the woman of God. There's a word from the Lord. Let's share. Let's tag one more time. Let's invite our friends. We don't have to get people to church tonight. We just got to get church to people. Let's spread this word, Elder Matisa, into your hands. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so, so, so glad um, to be here on tonight. I know that we absolutely love our pastor. So let's just thank God for the man of God. We are so honored. What I love about him is he's everywhere, but he's always with us. He's going to find a way to make sure that he touches the people of God. And so I'm so grateful for him tonight. I'm grateful for all of you being here. I'm grateful for midweek Bible study. And I appreciate the fact that we are a church with excellent music, excellent ministry, excellent administration, but we are a church who loves the word of God. This is our foundation. And we don't, you know, just sort of gloss over Wednesday to get to Sunday, but we need Wednesday for Sunday to even have the right effect. Amen. Because the reality is after we dance and shout, after we lift up our hands, after we run, after we come home and say, what a time we had, the enemy's still going to be there. Life is still going to be there. And we still need to know how to live. So I'm glad to be here tonight. Listen, we've done all the preliminaries. We honor God. We honor our pastor. We honor the um, Elder Robinson. I honor my husband. Let's go to the word of God. We're going to be in Romans, uh, the seventh chapter. This is familiar to many of us. Romans, the seventh chapter. And I love what our pastor said. I encourage you, get out your pen, your paper, get out your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you're going to use to take notes. And let me just tell you, 
I want you to uh, hold on to everything. This is not going to be a light Bible study, okay? This is going to be some meat tonight. I thank God that we can take a, we can take some some meat. We can take some milk, but we can take some meat as well. We're going to be in the Word of God, and this is what God has given me to share tonight, and I'm excited about it. I thank you. I thank God we already have some scribes. Thank you, Minister Dana. Romans the seventh chapter, and we're going to begin reading. Uh, at the 20th verse, we're going to read verses 20 to 25. And we're going to be, you know, we're going to see some different verses, but this is really going to be the foundation. Again, I encourage you take some notes. I say praise the Lord to all of you. And I'm glad you're here tonight. Let us read together. You can read it where you all read it in your hearing. The word of the Lord says, now, if I do that I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law. We know this, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. We know this verse. We quote it. We talk about it, right? But for I delight, excuse me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law. Somebody just put in the comments, another law. Come on, put in the comments. I see another law. I delight in the law of God in the inward man, in my spiritual man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Come on, y'all can tell this is going to be good already. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members which is in my members. Then Paul writes, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And this is what I want you to underline and ask asterisk. This is what we're going to take tonight as our foundation, because God never leaves us with a problem without giving us the solution right? Uh, the, the, the law in my flesh is warring against the law of my mind. But Paul says this in verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And the topic that we're going to use tonight as we go through the Bible is get your mind right. I want you to put that in the comments. Get your mind right. Have you ever uh, been doing something? I know this is true of myself, and I've been thinking about my mother quite a bit lately, and I'd be doing something, maybe doing something that I should not do. I'd be doing something that, that I was going to later get in trouble for, and she, she wouldn't always say stop. She wouldn't always say stop the behavior. She'd say, girl, you better get your mind right. Anybody besides me had that kind of mother where she would say something and it wouldn't be quite direct, but you knew exactly what she was trying to say. So in other words, what mama was trying to tell me was if I get my mind right, my behavior will follow. That what I was doing was not right, but if I were to get my mind right, then my behavior would straighten up. So what we're going to talk about tonight, Deaconess Nancy, good to see you. I love you so much. Uh, what we're going to talk about tonight is the importance of the people of God to get our mind right. Because this is what I know for sure, having walked with the Lord for a little bit of time now, what I know is the enemy is not trying to get your shout and your dance. Is this okay tonight? I told you we're going to come with a little bit of meat, all right? The, the enemy does not want your shout and your dance. He wants you to shout the best you can. He's okay with you running around. He's okay with you even coming to church. But what the enemy tries to do and does often is attack the very thing that the Bible said is what we need to actually serve the Lord. See, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in the introduction because I think you're, you get the premise already, but I want to be very, very clear. If you don't know anything else, I want you to know that God is calling us to a maturity in him that goes beyond surface things. Yes, Lord. 
God is calling us to a maturity in him so that we can stand firm when every wind of doctrine comes. We don't have to be moved by it, but we can be grounded and still say, I'm going to be steady in the storm, not because I know how to dance and shout, but because my mind is right. That when Monday comes and I look the enemy in the face and, and, and my child is sick or I get a bad report on the job, I'm not going to be shaken charity. Why? Because it is with the mind that I serve the Lord and I've made up my mind to be steadfast and unmovable. So what God uh, placed in my spirit tonight for the people of God, and we won't be too long, we're going to get out as normal, it is to make sure that our minds are shored up because what the enemy is going to try to do is bring discouragement. What it's going to do is try to get you to think wrong and where your mind goes, that's where your behavior goes. Let me say that again. Where your mind goes, where your thoughts go, that's where your behavior goes. So we're going to use, again, Romans, the seventh chapter as our foundation, but we're going to go into a number of different scriptures. So I talked about the, the title already. We have to get our mind right. In other words, God tonight is going to free somebody's mind. We've been wrapped up and we've been tied up, but it's not been our bodies because our bodies, we've been doing the things that we know to do, but it's our mind that God's going to free tonight. Wherever you are, if you could just shout free, maybe even type it in the comments, shout, type, free. When we think about having freedom in our mind, Sister Joy, to be free is to be exempt from external authority. To be free, to be free is to be exempt from external authority, from external re restriction, from external interference. In other words, Sister Donna, when my mind is free, that means that nothing around me is restricting me from continuing to serve God. That means that nothing around me has the authority <laughs> that God gives me in the spirit. That's why when people look at you and you're not crumbling under the pressure or the weight of life, it's because you've made a conscious decision to serve God. And might I add this before we get really into this? Can I tell you that faith in serving God is not based on emotion, it's based on a choice. That's why Paul tells us that it's with the mind that we serve the Lord. If I was only serving God based on my emotions, part of the time I would serve him because things would be going good. But half the time, if I could be really honest, I would not serve God because my life is not always up. My life is not always full or excuse me, uh, uh, deplete of right obstacles. I go through trials just like you do. So when we, when we serve God, it's not based on our emotions and that's where the enemy gets us. But can I tell you that the Holy Ghost can manage your emotions if you let him, right? Serving God is a choice that comes from my mind. In this particular scripture, what I love about Paul as he's writing the Roman church He's writing these letters that circulated among the Roman church. Paul spent a lot of his time writing from prison, right? So think about how amazing this is that Paul is physically restricted in prison, but he's talking about the importance of freedom of our mind. Why? Because life can put us in prison situations Hallelujah to God. But if we have the mind of Christ, if we have a free mind to serve him, then we won't be restricted in our relationship with him. So here Paul is writing to the Roman, uh, the churches at Rome, and he's in prison. And we see he talks about the fact that there is this war. There's a war between his flesh and the spirit. There's a war between the things that he knows he should do and the things that the enemy is bringing him to do that's wrong. Can I just put a pin in it right now? You don't even have to testify. I can't even see you through the screen. But what I know for sure is that if you are in Christ, every single one of you watching this, 
or who will watch this later, there is a war going on in you. There's a war between the things you know that, that are right and the things you know the enemy brings you that's wrong. That's the war. That's the reality. So I want to just say to somebody, you might think, why am I dealing with this? I thought I was saved now. Baby, if you're saved, that's when the war starts. If the enemy has you, there's no need for the war. Asa, I like that. You said good teaching. I know you know what temptation is like uh, on a school campus. Many of us know what it's like on a college campus. Many of us know what it's like in our house. There's a war going on. But what's important about what I'm trying to teach us tonight is Paul acknowledges the war, but gives us a strategy to win. Come on, let me say that again. Let me, let me get in my fighting stance. Hallelujah to God. Paul acknowledges the war. And I want to say, Elder LaShawn, let's acknowledge the war. Because the, the way the enemy is defeating some of us is he is keeping us silent about the things that we're facing. We don't want to talk about the fact that, that our emotions are being hit. We don't want to talk about the fact that, that for, for some folks who are married, you're fighting all the time. We don't want to talk about the fact that just in our mind, there is a depression and an anxiety that's trying to take over. But let's acknowledge the war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God to say, yes, I'm experiencing this, but I've got a strategy. So Paul says there's a war going on. When I would do good, evil is always present. When I when I would, when I do want to bless people, cursing tries to come because they cut me off. When I would want to treat people right, uh, uh, someone does something to just make me angry and triggers me and reminds me of what my mama did, reminds me of what my daddy did. So I'm always, I'm a halt between two opinions, not because I don't know what's right or wrong, but because I can choose one or the other. God doesn't make me, but it gives me strategy. So Paul, he says, listen, I love the law. The law. This is um, in verse 22. I love the word of God on the inside, but it's on the outside that I feel the struggle. And that's true of us. We love the word. We love the things of God. But when it comes to behavior, and you don't have to answer this, but if, if, if God were to use some sort of device or if man, if, if somebody were to use some sort of device to record your thoughts all day, and it had to be projected on the big screen, what would those thoughts be? You don't have to comment, but I want you to think about that. Would they be thoughts that were negative or would you be thinking on the things of God? Would you be dwelling on your problems and worrying about issues? Or would they be scripture? And I want you to think about that for yourself because the reality is, and we know this, you can't conquer what you don't confront. So if I'm honest, if I can look back over my days, days that I felt the worst, days that I that I didn't do the things that I that I should have done are days that my thoughts impacted my behavior. I'll give you a prime example. I went to work out yesterday and, I, you know, I'm already don't want to work out. And I go to I go to work out and I, I was pulling into a space. And somebody was coming out in front of me. They were backing out. And instead of backing out and just sort of stopping and letting me go by, they just kept backing, backing, backing. And I had to back up so that that person wouldn't hit me. Now, typically, I'm, I'm a pretty, you know, easy disposition. But I was already mad because I was going to the gym. I already was thinking negative thoughts. And Charity, guess what happened? I didn't cuss her out. Y'all, I ain't crazy, right? I got, I, got a, I got enough Holy Ghost and enough years with the Holy Ghost that, that I wasn't like that. But I was angry. And guess what? She came in the gym too. Sister Joy, can I be real? So not only did she almost hit my truck, and I, I'm looking at her, and I gave her one of those long side eye roll your eyes. You know, the kind that if she was near me, it meant, I, wanna, I wanted to knock her out, all right? 
so we go into the gym and she she walks towards me and I'm on the the um and I'm just being transparent. I'm walking on the on the machine. She comes towards me an hour later. And I I looked at her and rolled my eyes again, brother Gabe. Now now to some people you might think, "Oh, Dr. Matisse, you're you're, you know, being extra. That's not that big of a deal." It's not the point of it being a big deal. I didn't cuss her out. I didn't hit her. But what I realized in that moment is I had been thinking of her negatively from the time she did that until the time I got on that treadmill. So when I saw her, I was just as angry. So what I had to choose to do, and that's what we're talking about tonight. What I had to choose to do, Camille, is to think to myself, maybe she didn't see me. Maybe she was preoccupied. Maybe she was just having a bad morning. So what I was doing is I was letting her off the hook and saying within myself, is this important enough for me to be mad at her? Then I look on the news and I see there was a school shooting. And I think to myself in my mind, why am I harboring this? Why am I telling you this tonight? Because when I would do good, here came a situation that put me in a position to choose. Right? Life is too short. So, so what I want to say to you, man of God, woman of God, I don't care how saved you are, whether it's five days or five years or 50 years. That choice is always going to be yours. Paul says, with the mind, I serve the Lord. Look at this in verse 24. I love this part. He says, go up to 23. He says, I see another law in my members. In other words, I I'm trying to serve God, but another law creeps up. I'm trying to serve the Lord, but another, another thought creeps up. I'm trying to make the right choice with my husband, but another thought that from last week tries to creep up. I'm trying to talk to my children, but something they did last night tries to creep up. And I'm trying to make this practical. Because we want to make it so abstract. No, I'm talking about practical, holy living. How, how you know that we have the Holy Ghost is not by speaking in tongues and all of that. That's the initial evidence. But it is my fruit. It is my ability to choose right when wrong has a real good grip. <laughs> yes, Lord. I see you. I see you, Sister Megan. Good to see you, sis. It's, it's when I can choose love when anger wants to try to infiltrate my what? My mind. This is what I want to get to. Paul says this. When when that when that evil thing tries to come, right? When that other law tries to come and war against the law of my mind, when it tries to bring my body into captivity, Paul says in verse 24, "Oh wretched man that I am." He's recognizing the fight and the struggle. And he says, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And what Paul, the, the illusion or the illustration that he's giving, I told you Paul is in prison. And what they used to do to people in prison at that time, it wasn't prison where they had TVs and social media access. It wasn't prison where they had any kind of lights and all of that. It was a dark, damp cave. And the men who were in prison who died, they didn't take it, take them out, Sister Lily. They would leave them in there to decompose. So you had you had bodily fluids in there. I'm trying to paint a picture. You had it was dark, it was damp, and there would be decomposed bodies. And often what would happen in prisons at that time, they would literally handcuff the prisoners together. So if a prisoner died, the, the prisoner that was alive could be handcuffed to a dead prisoner with a decomposing body. So Paul's illustration here is, who shall deliver me from the body that I'm chained to? The body that's dying, the body that's dead, the body that's decomposing, and the body, if it continues to get close to me, will kill me. Because if you've got a dead body, it decomposes into your skin. 
and toxins. Sister Virginia, you're a nurse, you know this, that the toxins and all of the things from the dead person's body can then affect you so that now you're dying. Why is that important, Ashley? Because Paul is saying, yes, Lord, Paul is saying that the enemy will try to bring us to do things that's going to ultimately kill us. Paul said, who can deliver me from the body of this death, from being in this position? But then he gives the answer to his own question. He says in the very next verse, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the law, or excuse me, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. So what I want to say, Sister Jessica, what I want to say, Sister Kara, what I want to say, Deacon Jared, is every time as a person of God, we allow negative thoughts into our space, it's going to impact the way we behave, right? And we have to have the prayer, deliver me. How does God deliver me from it? How does God deliver me from the other law that's trying to take over my flesh? How does he deliver me? It's not casting out a demon. Can I just be real, real direct with you? You cannot come to the altar and get strength prayed on you. Let me sit that right there. Y'all know how we used to we used to testify back in the day. We don't do it now. But a lot of times people will it would end the testimony and they'd say, pray my strength in the Lord. You can't pray strength on. All you can do is choose strength. And the more you choose the right thing, the stronger you become. I told you we're going to we're going to get some meat tonight. Right. You cannot get delivered from making poor choices. No, God's going to give you a, a, a law that he gives and another law is going to come and you're going to have to choose. Am I going to choose the things of God or am I going to choose the things of my flesh? That's the only two choices we have, people of God. If it's not the things of God, it's the things of your flesh. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to drink or to smoke or to, to do things that we typically look at right? As sinful. Okay. But am I going to choose to, to, to sow discord among the brethren? Am I going to choose to use my, my mouth and use my, my conversation to run another saint down or another person down? Am I going to choose when I know that I'm supposed to be making the right choice, am I going to choose the thing that feels good to me, to my flesh, my ambition, my mindset? And you, you have to fill in the blank for yourself. Paul said, no, who can deliver me from the body of this death? I know it's with the mind I serve the Lord. And if we can change our mind, people of God, we can change our perspective and our behavior. Right. So let's keep getting into this. I've, um, this is really just my intro, but we're almost at time. We got just a little bit of time left. What this is what I want you to write down. Right. This is what I want you to write down. <clears throat> I'm glad this is helping. This is, you know, we, we need some practical teaching. The attitudes of our mind have to be renewed. Write that down. The attitudes of our mind have to be renewed. The attitude of our minds have to be renewed. And I'm going to give us several points as it relates to this. You can go ahead and turn to Romans, the eighth chapter, verses five and verse seven. So we're, I'm going to identify several attitudes of the mind that have to be renewed, right? The first one is the mindset of the flesh. Okay. Now that sounds like an old school term. For those of us who grew up in church, we, we hear about the flesh essentially, and the Bible talks about it. It is our own will, right? It is what I want to do as Matissa, not as a new, new person in Christ, but I, what I want to do as Matissa. So the mindset of the flesh, Romans 8, Verse five says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, right? Or the things of the sinful nature. Again, we're in verse five. 
but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. I told you there are only two things. It's either spirit or it's flesh. Choose spirit or flesh. Choose. And how can I assure that I'm going to choose the spirit? Because I have the mindset of Christ. And we're going to talk about that more in just a moment. Verse six says for, for to be carnally minded is death. In other words, having that sinful, that, that fleshly mindset is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse seven, because the carnal mind, check this out, is enmity against God. In other words, the carnal mind is an enemy of God. In other words, can I bring it closer to home? When we dwell on and think on things that are outside of what God tells us to do, we are essentially agreeing with the enemy, not God. So when I say things like, you know, I'm, I act nasty and somebody try, and I'm, when I mean nasty, I mean having a nasty attitude and someone calls me on it and I just say, oh, that's just how I am. I'm agreeing with the carnal mind, right? Or we'll just go here. I cuss somebody out, right? I might not say that you're going to hell for cussing somebody out, but I just tell you woman or man of God, ma'am of God or man of God. That is enmity with what God says. Because the Bible says blessings and cursings cannot come out of the same fountain, right? The Bible tells us in James that the tongue is hard to tame, but that's the thing that the spirit can help to get under control. So my point in saying that is when we declare or decide that what we're doing, even if it's against the things of God, is okay because that's just my way, the Bible tells us that that's a carnal mind and I'm an enemy now with God. How can I be a saint and an enemy of God? How can I be a Christian, a follower of Christ and an enemy of God? So that has to be renewed. What is the mindset that is fleshly or carnal? Self-gratification. It's all about what I want. It's not about the good of the whole. It's not about what God teaches. It's about what Matissa wants. It's my pleasure. That's a mindset of the flesh. It's my vindication. She said it to me, so I'm going to say it to her. Somebody watching this, you know, I gave the story about the woman going to the gym. Somebody probably thought, oh, pfft, that's nothing. I would have done this, this, and that and maybe have laughed about it. But my question is, is that a spiritual mind or is it a carnal mind, right? Is that what God would do or is that a good witness of the things of God or is that what my flesh intuitively does, right? The second thing that shows that our minds need to be renewed, Romans the 12th chapter, and the 16th verse, the 12th chapter and the 16th verse, the word of the Lord says, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. So not only do I have to make sure that I don't have a carnal mind that's all about my pleasure and my vindication and, and my self gratification, but I also have to make sure that I don't have a haughty mind. All right. And again, I'm just practically, practically teaching so that we're understanding that we have accountability in the things that we do and say and think. So when it comes to being haughty, how do I treat my brothers and my sisters, right? The world, especially now, is so status oriented. Y'all, if anybody has heard me teach, I talk about this stuff all the time because I get sick of it. I'm sick of it. That if you don't have a certain type of outfit, 
If you don't have red bottoms, and I know red bottoms aren't the only shoes, but that's the thing that we think about, right? If you don't have a certain bag or if you don't, if you don't drive a certain kind of car, then, then you, you're not valid. That is the direct polar opposite of what God teaches. Jesus taught that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But a haughty mind is, I'm not preferring my brother, all right? But I do prefer those of, of more status. I prefer myself over someone else. As Christians, Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. So I need to renew the mind that somehow suggests that I am better than, I am bigger than, I am more worthy than, right? I should be going out of my way. I love it, Sister Nicole. I should be going out of my way to connect with people who are unconnected. I, let me say to FCC, we've got a whole lot of people who have joined in a in, in very short amount of time. You know who I make a beeline to? To the people who don't have anybody around them. Do you know who I make the beeline to? I want to go hug and talk to somebody that I know is there by themselves. Why? Because I'm I'm preferring my brother. Right. I don't think that I'm better than because of any kind of external accolade. I know that we're all children of God and I don't want to dwell on this too long, but I just want to say the world's mindset. We cannot allow it to creep in the church. We can't allow it to take over so that our minds are based on status or what people look like or what people wear or, or you know, do they have the latest and the greatest? No. I, I came to have give you Jesus. Elder Lewis Pollard preached a great message on Sunday. I love that scripture because even when the, the beggar was asking for money, they probably had money that they could have given. I don't know how much they had, but they said, listen, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give. And guess what? The best thing you can give is Jesus. I could stay on that all day, but we'll, we'll keep going. All right. So when we think about, and I've got a number of different things, but I want to, I want to keep going. I've got more to give you. So, so the point to be made is there are fleshly attitudes of our mind that we have to pull down. Those are strongholds that we have to pull down. All right. But what God calls for is a renewal. Come on, turn to Romans 12. We know this scripture. Romans 12 and 2. We can quote it. I'll go, I'll go to one first. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Right? I, I, I give you pause. I beg of you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service. But this is what I wanted to get to. The word says, and be not conformed, all right, to this world. And I just talked about that. Don't be conformed. Don't be fashioned like the world. And I don't mean externally necessarily. I don't necessarily mean in terms of what you wear, but don't be uh, outwardly fashioned or don't have the appearance like the world has, but what? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So again, Paul contrasts in Romans, the 12th chapter and the second verse, he contrasts conformity versus transformation right? Again, he's contrasting. Paul is writing a treatise. He's writing the gospel in, in this amazing letter that, that's being distributed to the Roman churches. And in it, he's contrasting conformity to transformation. How do I not be conformed to what the world says and does? Be transformed by the renewing of my mind. So we need to be renewed in our mind. Turn to 2 Corinthians 4 16. 2 Corinthians 4 16. <clears throat> and if you're getting the word, I want you to just tell me in the comments. Tell me, tell me you're getting the word tonight. 4 and 16. 
The Bible says this, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is what? Renewed day by day. So the way we contrast, the way we um, don't uh, give in to what the world tells us we're supposed to do or how the world tells us we're supposed to act is we've got to be renewed in our minds. All right. Now, why does the, the mind need to be renewed? I'm so glad. Thank you all. Thank you all. Why does the mind need to be renewed? Because again, the world programs us to think a certain way. Guess what? Our families program us to think a certain way. For those of us who have fighting families, anybody on here besides me have a fighting family where it was nothing. I remember one time my cousin, I don't know who she called. We used to all congregate to my grandparents' house. I don't know who she called at my grandparents' house, Minister Virginia. But the next thing I knew, everybody got their shotguns because we were, we were a hunting family, got their shotguns because she was in trouble, went up to the apartment complex. I could see it like it was yesterday. And everybody was about to throw down. Do you hear me? The mentality is with our family, we might fight each other. But if one of us gets threatened, we're all coming for you. All right. <laughs> Tanika said, yep. <laughs> Charity, listen, you know what I'm talking about, sis. So the mindset of our family already, Elder LaShawn, is if you do something, this is how we retaliate. So when it comes to being saved, when you get the spirit of God, there is not automatically a switch that turns on and says, oh, now she's going to act saved. Now he's going to do right. That's not the way it works. The Bible says we have to work out our salvation. What does that mean? It doesn't mean we work for it. But when we work it out, that means every single day we have opportunities to choose right or to choose wrong. And the more I choose right, the easier it becomes to do that. The more I think and choose wrong, the, the more the struggle is going to be. So when it comes to renewing our mind, I want you as you're taking your own notes, it's conscious. As you're taking your notes, I want you to think about it. Where do I get my mindset? Why is it that it's so easy for cussing to come, in, to come up into your mind? Not saying you're cussing, don't get me wrong, but why is that the, the obvious first choice for you? If it's fighting, if it's being deceitful, can I just be honest? Can we be honest in, in this in this cyber sanctuary tonight? I said this before, you cannot conquer what you will not confront. The other thing that I get so tired of is the opportunity to get help by the word of God and with the things of God, but we're so, you know, we're just trying to hide what we do so much. Some of us lie. I know y'all don't want to admit it. That's okay. Because lying is that other, that's that other law that's trying to come up. But some of you lie. Some of you gossip. I didn't say you. I said some of you. Take it for yourself. All right? Some of you don't lie, but you will be deceitful. Some of you are self-righteous. And let me put myself in it. Some of us are self-righteous. So we want to look at those things that, that, we, that people war against when it comes to addiction, or we want to look at some of the war when it comes to those sort of what we consider big things. But can I just say real, real um, sweetly and lovingly, ma'am of God, man of God, there's more sins than smoking a blunt. There's more sins... <laughs> than, you know, being an adulterer. So what God is saying tonight is, ma'am of God, man of God, you don't have to reveal it to anybody, but when the Holy Ghost reveals it to you, can you have a real honest conversation with God and yourself 
and say, God, I've been losing in this area. This body of death, remember Paul, attached to that body. I might not be ta attached to addiction, but I'm attached to, um, you know, wrong thinking. I'm attached to lying. I'm attached to, right? Maybe not, maybe I haven't committed adultery. Maybe I I'm not fornicating, but I'm getting kind of close. I'm attached to illicit relationships. It, it's attached to me. It is a body of death. I'm attached to worry. It's chained to me. And I'm asking God, I was asking before this Bible study, who can deliver me from this body of lying? Who can deliver me from this body of gossip? Who can deliver me from this body of fornication? Who can deliver me from this body of sexual immorality? Who can deliver me from this body of pornography? Who can deliver me from this body? It's killing me. I know I'm ministering to somebody and you don't have to put it in the comments, but I just want you in your heart to say, she is teaching to me. Who can deliver me from this body that is absolutely trying to take me out? I feel God right there. Who can deliver me from this body of fighting? Who can deliver me from this body of wrong thinking? It's not going to kill you, beloved. It's not going to kill you, sis. It's not going to kill you. God said through Paul, you can, hallelujah to God, you can be delivered if you get your mind right. You can be delivered if you get your mind right. Dr. Wilbert, how do you get your mind right? I'm glad you asked. Turn to Titus 3 and 5. And I love it. I'm seeing in the comments, people are saying this is good teaching. You know, this is the kind of teaching where you don't really want to say a whole lot. So I 100% understand if you don't put anything in the comments, you just want to kind of just listen and take some notes. I love it. It's time to mature. Let me just say that as I'm, as I'm turning. It's time to mature. We cannot continue staying in the same place. God is saying it's time to go higher. I see. You love me. I see your shout. I, I see your dance. I see you want to serve. And all of that is great. But I, but God is asking the question, what, what's next? What now? How are you going to represent me better? All right. So we're going to be in Titus. What did I say? The third chapter and the fifth verse. All right. This is what the Lord says. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. I need somebody to put in the comments, you need the Holy Ghost. Actually, change it. Put, I need the Holy Ghost. Put, I need the Holy Ghost. If, if, if my parents and my family and, and the things that I am seeing has impacted my mind, right? How, Dr. Wilbin, can my mind be renewed? I want you to put in the comment section, I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. It's not by works of righteousness. I'm not being renewed because I work in the kitchen. I'm not being renewed because I, I, you know, serve on the parking lot ministry. I'm not being renewed because I serve in the choir. All of that's good. But it's according to God's mercy that he saved us by the what? Washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Beloved, man of God and man of God, if you do not have the Holy Ghost, you need him. Yes, Lord. And you don't need the Holy Ghost again because it makes you look some kind of way. You don't need the Holy Ghost because you get to do the church antics, although we love that. I will shout in a minute. All right. I will run away. Actually, you can do that without the Holy Ghost, to be real. 
It's not to speak in tongues to prove something to somebody else. You need the Holy Ghost to live. You need the Holy Ghost to be regenerated. You need the Holy Ghost so your mind can be renewed. When we have the spirit of God on the inside, the Bible says that the spirit and the word agree. That means even when my flesh does not want to do what the word says, something in my spirit, because I've got the Holy Ghost says, amen, and that's right. And even when I would not do good and, and evil tries to come, I've got the power. Yes, stop, die, yeah. I've got the power to say no when my body is saying yes. I've got the power to speak blessings when my flesh wants to speak cursing. Yes, Lord. When I have the Holy Ghost, I've got the power, yes, Lord, to walk in love when I've been mistreated enough that my flesh would feel vindicated if I just got him back a little bit. But it's the Holy Ghost that allows me to be a true follower of Christ. I told you this before, the Holy Ghost bears fruit, right? If you go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're not going to go there, but you can write it down. The fruit of the spirit, not fruits, plural, but the fruit of the spirit comes from me having the spirit of God. So when I have the spirit, I should, should see love, joy, peace, long suffering, all of those things that are, that are there. My flesh is not going to have that. All right. My flesh is going to have vindication. My flesh is going to have, I'm about to tell you off. My flesh is going to be, I don't have to go to church because I don't feel like it. But something in my spirit beckons me deep calls to deep i love what nicole has written in in, in um, psalm thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee you know that word heart is not some love emotion the word heart when you look at it it is the seat of our uh our it is our mind it's the seat of our emotions but it is our mind so when David says, thy word have I hid in my heart, he's not talking about a Valentine's Day heart. It is, I hid it in my mind. David says in Psalm, the first chapter, he says, my delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, do I meditate what day and night? So what David is saying is I take the word and I think about it. I think about how it applies to my life. He, what is David doing? He's renewing his mind. So when I hide the word in my mind and I go over it and over it and over it, and I'm thinking about how it applies to my life, when the, when situations come and, and another law presents itself, guess what my spirit brings back out of the reservoir of my, of the word that's in me. The spirit says, now Matisa, you know that the Bible says overcome evil with good. I can't get no help in this Catholic church tonight. I can't, I told y'all, this is not, this is not about dancing and shouting. This is about us looking at ourselves and taking accountability. So when I have the word in my mind, when I have the Holy Ghost, something pulls and the Holy Ghost says, you should not do that. What does the word say? And then the Holy Ghost gives me the power to do it, right? I love you, Sister Roberta. I'm so glad you're on. So that's how, that's one way that my mind is renewed. Turn to 1 Corinthians 2.16. Just a few more and then we're, a couple more and then we're going to get out of here. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. And I challenge you, take these scriptures and go back and study, study them for yourself. Uh, 2 and 16. Let me make sure I'm on in second. Oh, I'm in 2 Corinthians. I knew that didn't sound right. 2 Corinthians 2 and 16. Y'all, I'm trying to make sure that I read my, use my paper Bible more. I've gotten so used to uh, my phone and my iPad. 
I have decided this is my mama's Bible. So um, sometimes it's good just to go back and get your paper Bible so I can hear those papers ruffling. All right. So the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But what does what does Paul say here? But we have the mind of Christ. So if you want to know how your mind is to be renewed, if I've got the mind of Christ, then I need to study what Christ did, what Christ said, how Christ responded. Because if I have his mind, I should be doing what he's done. So how do I renew my mind? Got to have the Holy Ghost. How do I renew my mind? Got to have the word of God. How do I renew my mind? I, I study and understand how Christ responded, what Christ did. And what that does is it tells me if I'm comparing how I'm acting versus how Christ acted. Uh -uh, Matisa, that's not right. See, we don't do enough of that these days. These days, it's all about what I want, what I, you know, what I need, how I see things, how the world sees them. What if you took the time, and this is a challenge for me as well. What if you took the time you spent on social media and read the word of God? I want you to think about that. How would your mind change if you decided I'm not going to be on Facebook for a whole week and the time that I would scroll, I'm going to actually be in the word of God. It would revolutionize your world. I'm doing a challenge right now with a group of my friends and our challenge it, um, among a number of different things, we're working out and eating well and all of that stuff. But but there's two parts of the challenge that I absolutely love. The first one is it's just simply read a chapter of the scripture every day. Not studying to preach, not reading it, you know, for some other reason. Just read a chapter in the Bible every day. The second is just to pray in the spirit. And if you don't know what that means, it, it's praying with the unction of the Holy Ghost. So I, I'm using my Holy Ghost language to just pray in the spirit every day. And sometimes when I'm praying, I don't have a specific ask. I'm not saying, God, can you bless me? Can you do? I'm just speaking in my heavenly language, me and God. I'm just reading to eat, me and God. It is revolutionizing my day. I feel much more peaceful. Um, I used to wake up quite a bit at about three o'clock in the morning. That's usually a time that God has me pray. But often when I would wake up and we're, we're about to, to wrap up, often when I would wake up, there would be so many things bombarding my mind. Every bad thing, you know, things about my children, dying, just, just far-fetched things because the enemy knows that I'm between sleep and being awake. So because my mind is going, he's bringing all of these things. What, what is my point? As I've been reading the word and praying in the spirit, I've not been waking up with my mind racing like that. I, I, I haven't been waking up, you know, with, with the enemy just trying to bombard my mind. Why? Because my mind is being renewed with the word of God and in the spirit of God. I want to tell you, beloved, that the enemy is trying to reestablish some attitudes and behavior in you that's only going to come from the renewing of your mind. The Lord is trying to not get you to a higher platform. He's not trying to give you this international ministry. He might do all of that. But what God is trying to do in you and me is say, daughter, son, I want to renew your mind so you think like me, so you behave like me. So when people see you, they don't see Matisa, they see me. That my automatic, that my automatic response to something external 
is not my own vindication or not my own, you know, what I would do in my flesh or in my sinful nature. But my automatically my automatic response is, is this godly? Is this what God would do? How 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 can the world see God in me? It's not in your shout, beloved. It's not in your church service. For the world to see you, it's how you respond to trouble. It's how you respond to life. It's how you respond to those things that we all face every day. And I don't know about you, but I want to look like Jesus. I just do. You know, the other day, and I'm winding up now, the other day I was talking to God and my husband laughs at me because I just walk around talking to him like, like he's right in the room. But I was talking to God and I was like, God, why did you make me so different? Sometimes I just want to be able to go off. Sometimes I just want to be able to not worry about it. Like that woman in the parking lot, I just want to be able to just tell her what I think and keep moving. But you know what God said? He said, because you're my daughter and I need people to see me in you. People are not going to come to my house, beloved, but they are going to see me at the gym. They're not going to go to your family reunion, but they will see you at work. Can they see Jesus in you? Or are you masking it because you're doing your own thing? Get your mind right, girl. Get your mind right, man. God has need of us. And it's not tra traveling the nations necessarily, but it is being good to somebody uh, at your neighborhood grocery store. It is being good to somebody who's sitting on the pew next to you. Let me tell you something, and I promise I'm wrapping up. We're going to, um, I want you to get ready to sow. Some people already sowed. You've already given your tithes. If you have not, the ways to sow are already there. Um, so if that's you and you've not done that, I want you to get your offering ready. Sow into this word tonight. Um, but I will tell you, I was talking to somebody at church, from church the other day. And this person, this is, uh, FCC, this person just looked fine. I never, you know, talk, I talked to them. They were praising God. They were, they were doing all the things that we do on Sunday morning. And when I talked to them later, they said, you know what? I just had a death in the family, a really, you know, a really close family member passed away. And I didn't even know that. And part of me felt so bad because I thought, did I just overlook this person? Did I not have a sensitivity to what they were dealing with? Right. And I just want to say to you, God wants you to be able to comfort the clerk who is nasty. I mean, she is nasty. And God is going to send you into the store because when she's nasty, you're going to respond kindly and she's going to tell you that her mother just passed away. God's going to put you in the path of somebody on your job that normally you would just want to talk about. But he's going to renew your mind and they're going to reveal to you that they just got diagnosed with cancer. And because of the way you responded, because you represented Christ, he's going to be able to use you in that moment to minister. You and I are epistles read above all men. If they were to read your book, read your thoughts, what would your title be? What would people say? Is it that I have the mind of Christ or is that I want to do my own thing? Choose people of God. And when you choose, choose wisely and your behavior is going to follow. Come on, let's give God a praise wherever you are. Thank God for this word. This word was challenging, convicting, and inspires me just to be better. I pray the same for you tonight. I really encourage you, as I said, go back and listen to the Bible study. At least get the scriptures. Go back and read. For some of us, this is just reinforcement. This isn't new, 
but it's a reminder of why we're actually here. I'm so, so glad again that, that you stayed. Thank you for all of you all who started and stayed with Bible study tonight. God bless all of you. I love you so, so very much. I know you've sown. Continue to pray for our pastor as he ministers tonight. Um, just to reiterate very, very quickly on Saturday, our noon prayer, we've been having 40 or so people there every Saturday. Please, please join us. Um, it's at noon on our campus. Let's pray together for an hour. Immediately following, we are having training day, as Pastor called it. Leaders, uh, volunteers plan to join us for that um, training that he's going to do as we gear up for um, our Tribe Sunday. Also, Pastor didn't mention this, but I want to remind us at FCC, Saturday, I'm so glad, I'm so glad you enjoyed the word tonight. Um, Saturday, or excuse me, this coming Sunday is Pink Out. Pink Out. Tell your teams, tell the people that you're ministering with, we are going to recognize and acknowledge Breast Cancer Awareness Month on Sunday. So please, please wear some form of pink. You can wear all pink. You can wear something pink. Um, my mother had breast cancer, so it is definitely near and dear to my heart, that, that cause. Um, many of you have either dealt with it or know someone who have. We probably all know that. So please wear your pink on Sunday. Monday night is our, our Harvest Fest. Um, if you volunteered, make sure you reach out to Sister Jessica. That's going to be an amazing, amazing evening. And I just look forward to seeing you all. I want to hug your neck. So uh, hope, hopefully, I, hopefully I get to see you on Sunday. Pray for us. We'll continue to pray for you. Love you so much. Bye.